um, uh, have my discussions around uh, the need for innovation, uh, especially technological innovation and Zoom, particularly in our experience in the Philippines uh, and its innovation ecosystem, which can be viewed as a microcosm of the developing world and finally close with some points uh, to consider as we find ways of mainstreaming innovation and uh, leverage it for inclusiveness and connectivity and uh, regional integration. When people think of innovation, we uh, tend to think of uh, you know, product innovations, shiny new products like Apple's iPhone X or Fitbit Watch uh, or improvements on the performance of an existing product such as having uh, better digital camera resolution in a mobile phone or a new feature in a, to an existing product such as power windows to a car. But, you know, you, you, innovation is more than product innovation. You might, firms also have process innovations. Uh, a, a famous example of which is, of course, Henry Ford's invention of the world's first moving assembly line. And in recent time, a good example is uh, the mobile sales dashboard of Grupo Bimbo, uh, which has, uh, uh, a, it's just a baking company with uh, uh, centers in 22 countries and since the executive team members of this firm travel a lot having a mobile sales dashboard gives the team quick access to sales information and other KPIs uh, for each country they go to and uh, that provides them uh, you know, uh, that cuts guesswork in sales decisions and reduces meeting time Firms also have wider forms of innovation, non-technological innovation, such as marketing organizational innovation. Uh, and many of us are aware of that firms such as Amazon, Airbnb, and Uber have uh, disrupted uh, age-old markets in shopping, hotel, and taxi by tweaking or inverting their industry's traditional business models. And all of us in this room would recognize the need for countries to innovate, and yet, while we know that the returns, especially on technological innovation, can be very extremely high, yet countries, developing countries, unfortunately, appear to invest very little in R&D and innovation. Um, innovation is generally viewed as a key to in, in finding enduring solutions to socioeconomic and development challenges, such as creating new jobs for uh, continually growing population and promoting energy efficiency. And that's why the world has committed to the SDGs, particularly SDG 9 on industry, infrastructure, and innovation. Even in the Philippines, for the first time, we devoted a whole chapter in our Philippine development plan to science, technology, and innovation. However, several surveys, including one that we conducted at PIDS, uh, and also the World Bank's enterprise survey suggests that only a third of firms in the Philippines are product innovators. And between 30 to 40% are engaged in process innovation. While innovation and productivity and productive, productivity are distinct concepts, they're very related and recent data shows how competitiveness and innovation correlate Countries that do well in the Global Competitiveness Index and other indices about doing business um, tend to be the countries that are doing well in measures of innovation, such as the Global Innovation Index. In ASEAN, uh, some member states that are not doing too well in mainstreaming innovation and improving competitiveness uh, do so partly because the regulatory frameworks have not caught up with needs of the times. Uh, whereas some member states that have been ahead of developing proper regulatory frameworks and competition are, are doing well in ease of doing business indices and have stayed ahead in innovation. Um, while innovation, particularly technological innovation, has potentials to improve economic inclusiveness, but technology has also created divides. And in some cases, even exacerbated these divides. Um, across the world, the proportion of people with access to the net is now 53% with the population, um, but this means that still, 
well, of course, this has improved from about 6.5% in 2000, but that still means 3.6 billion people, more women than men, and more from the poorest and marginalized who live mostly in the developing world do not have access to the internet and thus cannot avail of digital dividends despite the much lowered cost of ICT services. In the Philippines, mobile services, mobile subscription has increased considerably from 2000, uh, surpassing even our population. In, we have uh, 100, as of late, 126 mobile subscriptions per 100 persons as of last year. And internet penetration has also increased from 2% in 2000 to nearly 60% by 2016. And here in the Philippines, we tend, uh, we, when we go online, we spend on average nine hours online, reportedly the highest in the world, uh, despite the fact that we have very slow internet. <laughs> but while digital technologies are being used more and more, um, digital dividends have hardly translated into improved socioeconomic welfare. Poverty rates have still been at a practical standstill despite recent economic growth. In a discussion paper that we uh, uh, made at PIDS, we provide a detailed summary of this survey and innovation activities for in 2015. And let me just give you um, a highlights of an econometric model that identifies the determinants of innovative behavior. They are, namely, gross sales, which correlates with the establishment size, educational attainment of employees, uh, knowledge management practices, location, and the industry group to which the firm belongs. Innovation, introducing innovation can be a complex process that requires coordination of multiple inputs. And the overall picture in the Philippines is that knowledge networks are largely limited, with firms tending to cooperate with establishments within their enterprises, their customers, and suppliers. Establishments also generally do not access technical assistance and support from government and research and academic institutions. Firms also report that cost factors and knowledge factors, Start moving, can I go to the next slide? Okay, sorry. Cost factors and knowledge factors are hindrances to innovative behavior. More than 10% of firms cited lack of qualified personnel as as well as difficulty in finding cooperation partners for innovation and uncertain demand for innovation goods and services, innovative goods and services, as being the, the barriers to innovation. As we see this picture of innovative behavior, we may want to remember a point made by a research paper by, in the World Bank that I referred to earlier about an innovation paradox. Despite the vast potentials of uh, uh, Returns to innovation, developing countries are investing far less than advanced economies. Even if developing countries, however, spend more on R&D and innovation, there's no guarantee that um, for returns on innovations, and sometimes it can, they, the returns may even be negative. Partly because of complementary factors, human capital, firm and management capabilities and financial markets which are missing. This brings me to my last set of points. So how do we foster innovation and use innovation as a mechanism uh, to promote more inclusive prosperity? And in a way, connectivity and um, regional in integration. Clearly, linkages among innovation actors will need strengthening both at the local level and also at the uh, regional level. While ultimately the private sector is the engine of economic activity and innovation, government has a role to play as a gardener, building up the human resources needed through education and training to have a sufficient pool of research scientists and engineers. We have too many lawyers here in the Philippines, uh, twice more than actually research scientists and engineers. We, uh, we also need to boost investment in required technology and research infrastructure and provide meaningful and impactful support to innovators. And finally, re uh, removing barriers and bottlenecks to innovative in, uh, initiatives in regulatory frameworks. Innovative innovate, country, countries will certainly need to have a detailed plan to steer innovation with specific deliverables. 
and irregular monitoring of the extent of innovation activities being undertaken to ensure that innovation dividends are maximized and reaped by all. Thank you. And